Whoa. Oh, jeez. I'm gonna get, I knew that was gonna happen. Falling debris, lots of flying vehicles, and Tom Cruise, is that you? Today, we're headed back to the mean streets of Los Santos, breaking down and reacting to all of the intense medical scenes and insane injuries from Grand Theft Auto. Let's dive right in. Oh man, motorcycle accidents, a very common reason why somebody comes to the emergency department. We see everything from scrapes, bruises to, you know, death and then basically losing limbs. Sometimes it's related to speed, obviously, but then your protective gear. I always tell people, I'm like literally wear full gear, leathers or Kevlar, helmet, gloves, boots. People laugh at me, but nobody wants a skin graft and that stuff keeps you intact. Use a stupid don't fight in front of the police. Oh my gosh. If somebody gets hit in the jaw, you increase the risk of having a fracture to the jaw, losing a tooth, even just cutting the inside of your mouth. You can fracture your hand with something called the boxer's fracture, where you fracture the metacarpal relating to the fifth or the fourth, and basically they snap and they pop up. Holy cow. Multiple gunshot wounds to the chest and abdomen. I've seen people who have gotten shot multiple times and survive, and I've seen individuals that have gotten shot once and they pass away. It just depends on what's actually hit underneath, what vital organs versus how much bleeding. In this case, sometimes people do come into the emergency department still alive. You're worried about impending doom of losing airway, losing blood, and having the heart stop. <gasps> oh my gosh. This is... What is happening? It's a blood trauma. It hits you shoulder, neck, maybe face. I would be worried about cervical fractures, large hematomas to the neck, worried about the underlying structures of the major blood vessels in the neck, and obviously fractures of the clavicle, the ribs, and the proximal humerus, AKA the shoulder. Individuals who fall off of a motorcycle, a lot of times you want to get rid of the bike, get away from it, let it slide as you slide. Then a motorcycle hitting somebody going 30 miles an hour is probably going to be quite detrimental. Blunt trauma force just depends on where the injuries are to see what ends up happening. <gasps> oh, wow. Biggest concerns are fractures in the neck. There's multiple different types of fractures that could occur in the neck, and they have all different crazy names. Jefferson fractures, there's hangman fractures, there's compression fractures, blowout fractures, there's all these funky names. Funky. There's compressive forces and hyperextension or hyperflexion that could occur, and then the effects on the spinal cord in that area. Oh my gosh, that's not funny. That's not funny. It actually happens in real life. People flip vehicles, they fly out of vehicles, people get run over. Getting stuck in the wheel, that is awful. We see people that get their legs run over, their foot run over, get fractures or dislocations, sometimes are totally fine, it just depends. I'll see car accidents where people get thrown from the vehicle because they're not wearing their seatbelt. Paramedics will come in and say, hey, we found the individual like 60 feet away from the vehicle. That's probably not a good idea. <gasps> oh, wow. You're getting hit from behind a whiplash type injury where the body kind of extends backwards, then compressed down and even more hyperextension of the neck, which can cause significant amount of fractures to the neck, snapping off spinous processes. What's up? Man, you suck. <gasps> Man, oh. Up. Knife wound to the left lower quadrant of the abdomen. Basically, you're looking at your colon, some small intestines. Posteriorly, you have your ureter there, which is basically connects your kidney to your bladder where the pee goes down. And then if you go a little bit higher up, you have your spleen that's protected underneath the ribs on the left. But if the knife penetrates, it goes up, you can actually lacerate that. So a shot to the right side of the spine in the back straight through, could hit the right side of the heart because it's midline, but to the right, also hitting right into the lung. As the energy goes into the body, it actually expands, right? So it can cause more trauma. And it looks like it goes all the way through to the other individual, which is more on the left side, which can wreak havoc on the body, obviously, as well. Play that Piece of oh, jeez. Oh, <gasps> 
whipping out a hammer, Pick up the hammer right to the head. It does happen. People use any objects possible to injure each other, and a hammer is a quite common tool. Typically, they're causing more blood trauma, lacerations, avulsions of tissue, and could cause some fractures, especially hitting the skull. Oh, oh, man. This is exactly what I'm saying about wearing a seatbelt. That's what I'm talking about. Multiple horrible things happening all at once. When people come to the emergency department after being thrown from a vehicle, there's so many injuries that we worry about. And we literally do a head to toe survey to check to make sure that we're not missing somebody. And most of the time, almost like a non-thinking, order everything. We'll take the lot. Head to toe CT scan because you don't want to miss something. Whoa! Oh jeez. I'm gonna get oh, I knew that was gonna happen. Crush injury. You're gonna potentially have some burns and then any blunt trauma or direct lacerations, amputations because the weight of a helicopter hopefully all the weight didn't land on that individual. If it did, probably not survivable. Oh! <gasps> Who's got machetes these days? What the heck? At a tennis court? I've seen plenty of machete injuries. Machete. If you're awake and alert, compress the area. If you don't have anything to compress the area, you can try to compress with your own hand, and then obviously a tourniquet if needed. There's a lot of different things you can actually do or somebody around can do. Oh! <gasps> what? Holy cow! Head injury, the big laceration, we probably repair that with staples if it doesn't go all the way through. If it goes all the way through the brain and lacerates the brain and cuts it into pieces. Oh no, my brains. The potential of surviving is probably low. It just depends on what part of the brain, the function of the brain in that area that is injured. Some of them are survivable, but it needs to get through the skull. As I've said previously on many, many, many videos, really hard to get a blade into the skull. Whoa. It's like some Mission Impossible stuff going on. It looks like the legs are wedged between the wings. And if there's a lot of force going on behind the knee, you have your major blood vessels that are running there. So you can press those too much. Too much! You know, you can decrease some blood flow to the lower extremities. And obviously the blood is pooling down the other direction. You're flying fast, the difficulty, probably getting air in and breathing. Then you're gonna start having temperature changes as you get further up. This game is a lot more intense than I thought. If you guys enjoyed this and learned something, please let me know in the comments and definitely check out this playlist right here. Binge watch it. And as always, make sure you subscribe, turn your bell notifications on and hit that like button for me. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.